Hey everybody, we're here live tonight. Uncharted The Lost Legacy launches at PlayStation Store. If you preload, you can still get in on that free copy of Jack and Daxter, The Precursor Legacy. You'll also be able to start preloading the game so you're ready to go at nine o'clock Pacific, midnight, or 12 Eastern if you're an East Coaster. But anyway, I've got quite a cast of characters here with me. We have a lot to talk about. I've got Kurt Marganau. Hey. Look at that. Hey. You're, you, tell us what you do, sir. Tell us what you do. Uh, I am the game director of Uncharted Lost Legacy. That seems like a good job. That, that's like a good gig. It's pretty good. Yeah, so you like kind of <laughs> assemble it from like a 10,000 foot view. Yeah, me and, uh, and Shauna Sky, creative director, who's uh, chilling in the Caribbean right now. Shout out to Sean, he's <laughs> <laughs> uh, watching. <laughs> We've got Laura Bailey. Oh. My goodness, <laughs> Nadine oh, wow. Ross, right Hello. here in the flash, yes. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us Hey, tonight. thanks for having me. That's right. We've also got Claudia Black. Thank you so much for joining us. And you play? Chloe Fraser. That's right. Mm. Yes, you do. And you are <laughs> a veteran of the Uncharted series. I think it's fair to say that now. Yes. This is the third game. True. Yeah. So yes. uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about what that all means. Awesome. And then we got Josh Sher, co-writer, Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got for you, I mean. That's all right. That's, that's right. cool. Yeah, co-wrote the uh, game with Sean. That's right. That's right. And it's uh, what what a game it is. I got a chance to play it a little bit. I loved what I played. We're gonna we're gonna actually play it a little later tonight. But wanted to uh, maybe take a little stroll down memory lane. What do you guys think? Well, all right. Sure. Yeah, well, all right. <laughs> Let's do it. I mean, so, this is barely a month ago. Does that count as memory lane at this point? <laughs> <laughs> I was refer referring to memory lane when it comes to Chloe Fraser, ah. actually. So, Chloe Fraser is a fan favorite. Is that is that fair to say, Claudia? Fan favorite? I'm a massive fan yeah. Yeah. of Chloe Fraser. Yeah. So, I'm a yeah. huge fan yeah. of Chloe. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, statistically, in, within, in this room alone, we've got some, some good odds for Chloe as a favorite. That's mm -hmm. great. What do you think is sort of the secret to <laughs> Chloe's success? I mean, she made her big debut in Uncharted 2 Among Thieves, notable character. Hopton kind of made an extended cameo in Uncharted 3, and now she's got her own game, alongside, of course, Nadine Ross. Hey. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I don't think, I think the fun thing for me is that she never had to play nice. She could say exactly what was on her mind. She's like the walking id of a lot of people, you know, she just gets <laughs> to do and say and be all of the things that we're sort of normally told we're, we're, we're never supposed to, to unleash in our culture. And so within a game, you know, environment that gives her a lot of scope, but she's also, she's very flawed and, and, um, in some ways unapologetic. And I think it's fun to explore in this latest game the places where she's willing to actually own some, some parts of her personality that are a bit antisocial. Interesting, and uh, w from what little I have played, I've only been able to get an hour or so into Uncharted The Lost Legacy. I mean, I gotta wait just like everybody else, but I could already see uh, layers on the Chloe onion being peeled back. I was very intrigued by that. It's yeah. weird, because I've always thought of Chloe as an onion. Right? Because she makes <laughs> you cry all, all the time. Oh my goodness gracious, <laughs> my goodness gracious. And uh, when it comes to <laughs> Laura, when it comes to Nadine I Ross. I didn't mean to interrupt your question, though. Not you didn't at all. Answer it. But you You're... did, and that's okay. So that's it's absolutely all about, fine. about Laura and Nadine. That's right. So, Laura, uh, Nadine Cross, one of, uh, one of the most popular Nadine characters. Nadine Ross. Nadine Ross. Oh. I've got so much. Oh I've got so much to keep straight. I gotta. I gotta pronounce Kurt's names right. I gotta get all these names <laughs> right. I'm terribly no, sorry. I, I said it right earlier. Uh, <laughs> what do you think uh, draws people to Nadine? Um, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to now answer her questions because it's only fair. Uh, I think that she's incredibly capable, you know? Yeah. Um, I think some people are a little intimidated by that, mm -hmm. um, which is completely natural. Uh, but I think that's what I love about her is that, you know, like Chloe, she's unapologetic about how powerful she is. And um, in a lot of ways, she's the exact opposite of Chloe. Um, because she's completely focused on one singular thing and she will accomplish that goal um, while Chloe works her way around it. And I think that's what makes them such an amazing partnership. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of opposites attract, right, Josh? I mean, is yeah. that, it, how, did you, how did you guys kind of land on these two characters? It's sort of an unlikely pairing. Well, I mean, what we were always trying to do is, uh, you know, once we decided that we wanted to uh, make a game with uh, Chloe in it, you know, you always want to pair somebody up with somebody who, like we just said, you know, brings out uh, the interesting facets of their uh, personality and character. And, you know, looking through all the, uh, looking through all of our choices, uh, we all love Nadine from Uncharted 4. Uh, she has sort of the unique aspect of her is that she's one of the, no, not one of the, she is the only Uncharted antagonist that actually lives 
to the end of the game. Mm. Uh, so, Spoiler. and we feel here. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. You had a year to play an Uncharted for us. Sorry. <laughs> the uh, statute of limitations exactly. is expired. Right. Exactly. And you know, we always felt like you know, because she was a secondary character in that game, we always felt there was a lot more that we could explore there. And really, the most interesting thing is, yeah, Chloe is somebody who likes to improvise, she like talks her way out of a situation, she just sort of flies by the seat of her pants, whereas uh, Nadine is a lot more tactical mm -hmm. and a lot more reasoned. And what, do you ha what happens when you put oil and water together? And how can these two work together? And where do they find conflict? And where do they find common ground? And that was really sort of the uh, catalyst for uh, bringing the two of them together. Sounds like a, it seems like a good catalyst. Seems like uh, a real good it, catalyst. It worked for us. I mean, yeah. you know, it was a good, it was a good jumping off point. And uh -huh. then, of course, you know, uh, we loved working with uh, Claudia, and we hadn't done so since Uncharted 3. And then uh, Laura, we had just come <laughs> off of Uncharted 4 with. And, you know, we figured, you know, we'd put the two of them together and see what happened. And, um, well, you know. <laughs> you, you, saw what, you saw what happened just a moment ago. <laughs> Fireworks ensued, right? Yeah. So, Kurt, from your perspective, I mean, this is an Uncharted game unlike any other we've we've really seen. I mean, we got a little taste, I think, in Uncharted 4 with that Madagascar level. One, one of the most sort of jaw-dropping moments in Uncharted history, for me, at least speaking personally. And it seemed like maybe that was sort of pointing the direction of where, you know, Naughty Dog was interested in taking the series. So tell me a little bit about that structure that Uncharted The Lost Legacy has. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're referring to, you know, the really big open uh, space. Yeah. And just a big old sandbox, you yeah, know? Yeah, you mentioned the, the Madagascar level Uncharted 4. I think, you know, like you, I, you know, we found that, like, that was a really good place where all the mechanics are kind of firing on all cylinders and having the most combat options and you're exploring the space. Uh, the thing that we wanted to even take a step further was that sense of exploration that we you know, kind of have an Uncharted 4, but in that narrative, it's about pushing forward and like getting to that destination at the end. So you're you're pushing through. But we had an opportunity here to say, what if we just don't give you much of a goal at all and just let you kind of venture off? We have all these tools at our disposal and just go off and yeah, maybe you're gonna fight some guys, maybe you're gonna find some puzzles, and it's all gonna it's gonna be the truest, most open sense of exploration that that we've done. So we yeah an opportunity to push that forward. That's cool. It really I mean, seems to align with Uncharted. The mm -hmm. word Uncharted is the way I keep saying I mean, to people. Even before we had settled on Chloe and Nadine, we knew that we wanted to try to make the most open-ended environment we'd ever made. Awesome. So, I mean, prototyping on that started well before uh, we had settled on everything. So, uh, and then once, uh, once the story kind of crystallized, then we were able to start like uh, putting in more specific details. But, you know, we figured, you know, this is an opportunity. You know, anytime you make a game like Uncharted 4, you, always run out of time to do the things that you really want to try out. You know, you have to make decisions and like actually get the game out the door. Yeah. And so once we did that, the things we were thinking like, oh, I wish we could have like, you know, done a little bit more with Madagascar and the open water level. And this was like, you know, another chance to uh, do that. Take another crack at it. It is yeah. the largest environment uh, Naughty Dog Sun in an Uncharted game, I believe. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know if I we mean, have a way to measure that, yeah. but it just... You didn't get that with the tape measure <laughs> and down like, on the hands and knees? <laughs> it's probably the biggest. Okay, probably the biggest. It's very, it's very it's large. The one. It's probably the biggest. Yeah, very, it's very the large. largest contiguously playable area. I mean, maybe... <laughs> it was definitely the hardest one to make, so okay. it's, it, won, it wins that one. I'll yeah. take that. Yeah, that counts for something. So yeah, now, exactly. I uh, we did ask the producers to actually pull some clips oh. uh, from... Producers. Yeah, that's right. There are producers running this, uh, this thing. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> We've got uh, some clips we're going to be showing here about uh, showing Chloe and her uh, her big debut in Uncharted 2. But we've also got Nadine Ross. All right, all right. We're all right. gonna we're gonna kind of revisit her as well. So thought maybe we could start there and we could start to. You uh, have to be patient. That's right. Just a that's right. Patient. By the way, I thought of the perfect. It's John. Oh, he's been after the Tinder Money Stone for go. years. <laughs> well, if he's been counting on Flynn to find it for him, it's no wonder he hasn't had any luck. <laughs> if I can get a look at Lazarevich's files, yeah, right. right after they've. Uh, Busted Nate out of prison, and they're uh, planning to uh, go to Borneo to uh, go after Lazarevich. Now, Claudia, one of the things I wanted to ask you here, and it's just kind of fun to see, you know, Chloe's changed a lot over the years. Uh, Haven't we all, darling? Yeah, I know, right? Uh, but tell me this. How, what did the initial pitch to you for Chloe look like? And, and was it consistent, or was it something where there was a push and pull with you and Naughty Dog around? what the character should be and, and who she should be. I'm oh, curious. no, she was beautifully 
written already. Um, yeah. When I remember the audition, I was either just coming back from a trip or just about to go away. And I had this little window. And when I read, there were a couple of things they were looking for. They weren't attached to the accent, but they knew they wanted something more exotic than, than <clears throat> standard American dialect. And it was could be South African, New Zealand, or Australian. Mm. And I was like, oh, I can do all three. This is mine <laughs> to lose, just on that alone. I love the audition scene. It was the scene where she goes to bail Nate out of jail. Yep. And Gordon Hunt, the beautiful Gordon Hunt, was directing. He was there at the auditions. And um, I just had a, an interesting feeling about it. Normally, you walk in and you see other people either dressed very much like you, looking like you if it's an on-camera audition, and you just think, oh, my God, it's the usual suspects. So they, they're, they're just going to choose based on whoever just sort of really knocks it out of the park or has the prettiest hair that day, who knows. But I sort of looked around the room and I thought, they're not auditioning a lot of people. And I was really excited and I really <laughs> wanted it. I remember telling my family at the time, I was like, this, is, this seems like such fun and I love this character. And there was just something, I dropped my pages, they fell on the floor in the audition. Mm -hmm. And that's either sink or swim in those moments. People either say, you know, you got the job because of what happened next, or you were out the door because we were like, what a loser. <laughs> and, in, and in this instance, it really worked in my favor because I just, I knew the lines well enough and the scene was engaging enough that I could stay focused on Nolan, who was also there. Mm -hmm. so that was a massive treat to sort of basically have a chemistry read with him. Mm -hmm. And we started falling around just, with our clothes on. Um, just, oh just, 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 well, word play, scene. word play. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I thought, wow, this is such a fun gig. I can't believe that this guy is so fun to work with and the, the character's great and, and it, and it panned out. So I was remember, already. Do you remember what the scene was that you auditioned? Was it the, yeah, bailing, the, on the bed? there were two, I think, bailing Nate out of oh, jail. Okay. I think it was bailing Nate out of jail and it was also the seduction scene, wasn't it? Or was it? Because uh, oh. you know, yeah. we did, I remember we did callbacks because the first time we did the auditions, it was in that oh. small, windowless, featureless room. Okay, uh, no, this and that was, was a mostly big room. A, and that was mostly a read, and then we did a second one okay. uh, just as a callback. Uh, and we were pretty sure it was going to be you, but we just wanted to be sure. Really? Now uh, they tell and me. And then, uh, well, can't tell you then. But then, <laughs> uh, but then, yeah, that was one where we actually like did a little bit more performancy yeah. stuff. But yeah, I, it may have been the seduction scene, or or it was the scene where you're talking about the perba dagger and like finding the symbols in the city. Maybe, I but I just remember. remember there was something. It's really fun when you get to sort of bring it alive in a way off the page that you don't. It's so clinical in auditions, and there was just this moment where I was starting to where Chloe's getting agitated by Nate and he's just being cavalier in the prison cell. And I remember raising my voice and then realizing where I was and looking around and then dropping my voice. And Gordon mm -hmm. said to me, that in his book got me the job. Mm. You were the only actor to do that. Right. Everybody else was just keeping it at a high pitch and not paying attention to the fact that it might be guards listening or anybody right, else right. around the thing. And it was just well written. So I just was <laughs> able to be inside of it more and sort of actually feel like I was someplace else. And that's what, and in that moment, I, was, I actually was a good actor and made a decent choice. <laughs> We're seeing a little bit more here. Uh, Claudia, I'm kind of curious uh, from your perspective how Chloe has evolved from Uncharted 2 when she was sort of introduced to the series. She made, like, I kind of said, like an extended cameo. It was mm -hmm. probably a little more than that. But she made an appearance in Uncharted 3, and then now she's got her own game alongside Nadine Ross. So yeah. uh, tell me a little bit from your perspective how she's, her, her character arc or how she's evolved over the years. Well, she's just, she sort of comes and goes. She sort of really beats to the, what's the, I always mix these up, to the sound of her own drum. Oh my God. Be, beat of a different drummer. To the beat yeah. of her, her own, own drum. drum. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God for you. Um, and so she sort of interlopes and she'll come in when she needs something. She's not good at relationships. She's not good with people generally. She'll be as honest as she can be. And I think there's always been, I'm always interested as, you know, as an actor, what's underneath, what's underneath. And there was always this sense with Chloe that she's not, she doesn't feel she's capable of being in it for the long haul. So she just gets the best out of any situation mm. she can. And then in three, it becomes quite clear. She just, she walks away when things get dark and difficult and says, you know, you're on your own, I'm out of here. And that was kind of the part of the uh, catalyst for uh, writing this particular one, which is sort of the, what would, 
what would be the situation where uh, Chloe could find herself in that she couldn't necessarily walk mm -hmm. away, or at least would have to make a really, really difficult decision, whereas in the earlier games it was very yeah. clear-cut for her. Right, and so she really has to, you know, there's some growth for her here, and you can see that the places where she could be a child, and then she's got this person she still has to keep dealing with who's not going away. And because Nadine is so focused and so sort of, you know, goal-oriented, she's not going anywhere. So Chloe's faced to have this mirror that she has to keep sort of seeing the worst parts of her herself reflected back just by by virtue of there being someone who's consistently there um, and so they're interesting you know mirrors for each other in that regard forced to work with each other it's such an unlikely pairing in a lot of ways and yet Chloe has respect for Nadine because of her skill set and mm -hmm. how you know she specifically hires her knowing that this could be a really weird you know work environment with the two of them and yet she she values and understands what she does. She values what Nadine has and what she doesn't have. So in that space, there's this possibility of Chloe actually really just accepting who she is and from there seeing if it's possible for her to grow up a bit. Yeah, like a, a bit of a growth yeah. uh, possibility there. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. I, I love hearing you talk about the character work just because it's so intellectual. You get really into the characters. I think it's really cool. Of course, you on the writing side, you're also very attuned to all of that as well, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Eh, sure. Sure, yeah. <laughs> good answer, good answer. Uh, I yes. do think we've got a little bit of uh, footage showing off Nadine from Uncharted 4, a little walk down, Gracious. little walk down memory lane there. So I uh, wanted to just refresh everybody here, get everyone up to speed before we get ready for Uncharted The Lost Legacy, which is out tonight at 9 p.m. Pacific time at PlayStation Store. If you pre-order, you get Jack and Daxter, the precursor legacy, which we're going to check out here in a minute. Don't think I forgot. Two legacies. Uh, that's right. One two, date. two legacies. One day. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, but let's see if we can get that Nadine footage up there. Uh, but Laura, I'm curious from your perspective. Uh, yeah. What did it look like? Excuse me. What did it look yeah. like? Uh, there we go. She's oh. so fucking hardcore. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's so hardcore. <laughs> so, I mean, Nadine, when she was sort of, when Naughty Dog presented her to you, essentially, and you were in consideration for the, for the part, yeah. uh, was it pretty consistent with what we ended up getting in the final game, or was there a collaboration between you and Naughty Dog? I mean, I think. Anytime you work with Nadia Dog, there's going to be a collaboration because they're so great about, you know, incorporating what you bring to the character mm -hmm. and, and are interested in what you're going to bring to the character. Um, when I auditioned for Nadine, the only descriptive terms that I had for her was that she was South African and she um, was a, like a general's daughter. Hmm. Her dad owned a militia. Um, and so that's, that's where I went in with it. My auditioning scene was um, the one with Rafe where they're... Um, figuring out where, where Nate was spying on them and he was seeing like this back and forth, basically arm wrestle for power between the two of them. And you get to see this little bit of, is there a romance there? But it's also very business. And I think one of the coolest things about Nadine is her, it had always been her ability to separate business from personal and it didn't overlap in her mind. You know, if I can, I can screw you over professionally, but we can still have a really great relationship. And it's um, an interesting perspective to have. <laughs> I know, Cold. but she was able to separate that. <laughs> and then in walks Chloe Fraser. Um, Saunters. Yeah, Saunters. sorry. Swaggers. Swaggers in. Sachets. Um, yeah. Yeah, and Maybe I think that much. relationship, <laughs> this relationship here, makes her have to deal with uh, her separation, her wall in her mind of, of bringing those two things together. Interesting. I, I, we did take some fan questions here, uh, awesome. and I'll read one here. This is uh, Rebecca from Twitter asked, uh, Kurt and Josh, but by all means, Laura, Claudia, chime in. Uh, what made you guys decide on making a game centered around Chloe and Nadine? Now, you guys have been on the record that you had considered some other possibilities. We considered literally almost every other possibility. Because <laughs> <laughs> the thing, all we knew when we started is that we knew that uh, Nathan Drake's story was finished mm -hmm. and that we wanted to go focus on some of the uh, side characters or secondary characters. And I mean, we tried all different combinations. We went, we did some Sullivan explorations, we did some early Chloe explorations, uh, but we kept circling back to uh, Chloe because, uh, you know, fascinating character, fan favorite, um, and, um, Good you know, Oh my! Sure. Really, really good. Yeah, I mean that animation is yeah. just like, <laughs> whoa, class. I'll pass that on to the animators. <laughs> they worked really hard on it. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, and like I said earlier, uh, just seemed like an opportunity to do a, a really uh, interesting pairing and one that 
we hadn't really done it in any of our games before, and one that isn't really seen very often in games. Mm. Uh, you know, it wasn't really the end goal to make a game with uh, two central female characters, but uh, you know, we were just sort of happy that we ended up that way. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And there's mechanical considerations too, like with you know a young Sullivan or a a really old Sullivan. Yeah. Uh, we knew that Chloe and Nadine together can do all the mechanical things that you need to do in Uncharted. There's no question, you know, especially with Nadine being even more capable in some ways than Nathan Drake. So, mm. you know, just from like a logical, mechanical, perspective, we knew that we could do everything we wanted to do mechanically with them. Mm. Yeah. Here's a good question I got. Um, this one's uh, from Christopher on Facebook, and Christopher asks. Uh, this is a deep cut. Let's see okay. if you guys have anything to say to this. Was Chloe's letter to Nathan Drake in Uncharted 4 a hint for the Lost Legacy? Not at all. <laughs> and in fact, uh, if I remember correctly, the letterhead was from a hotel in Sri Lanka. Total coincidence. Whoa. Absolute coincidence. In fact, I think, uh, <laughs> I, think, I, think a, I think a NeoGAF user pointed that out, and I was like, oh. My hey, goodness. Hey. Totally meant it, you guys. <laughs> totally meant it. Serendipity. Awesome. Do you want to take two yeah. on that? We yeah, can go yeah. back and say uh, it was yeah. all planned out. It was totally all planned. planned. We weren't no, sure no. we were going to go with Chloe, but we thought we might, so we slipped no. a hint in. Well, okay. Well, to be honest, uh, when I was working with Uncharted 4, with, with Neil and Uncharted 4, I was very deliberately, because I knew we were going to do some story, something or another, I was very deliberately like putting all these little things in here and there that could be hooks to something else. Mm -hmm. Whether it's that conversation with Sullivan and Nadine of talking yeah. about the time that they did something and talking about right. Sullivan talking about some police chief yeah and like you know Sullivan and Sam at the end of the game exactly that, so, that's where I, my head was yeah, yeah. so uh, you know all those possibilities like in some cases were very in my case deliberately planted sort of like oh this could be fun mm. uh, and but if you know Chloe <laughs> uh, yeah but you know we wanted to put Chloe in letter in there because you know we knew she was going to be in the game we wanted to like have a little tie back and you know Nate looking back on his past and where his life is going now uh, but yeah, everything else about the letter being from Sri Lanka, total quinky dink. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, just happy it worked out that way. S serendipitous, though. Yeah. Oh, totally. L let's say that. Yeah. yeah. Let's see here. What else we got? Uh, you know, I thought it might be fun to take a little trip down memory lane in another way. Kurt, you've actually been with Naughty Dog now for some time. Tell us a little bit about uh, how you got your start at the studio and kind of the path that led you to being game director here on Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like a noob compared to guys like Josh, some of these people that have been here for even longer. Um, I've been here about nine years. I started in 2008, a little game called Uncharted 2. Mm. Uh, so my, my time in Naughty Dog kind of starts a similar time as Chloe's uh, in that way. And yeah, I was a designer, I was a technical designer, scripter. I worked on a lot of set piece type moments and things. Uh, one of the first things I worked on with uh, Neil and Bruce was the collapsing building E3 demo. Oh, that was a so that was like a memorable a fun, one. That was a fun thing to work on. Yeah. Kurt's basically responsible for some of the most uh, epic shit in the Uncharted games. <laughs> so, uh, Mini beep. Yeah. So, so you were a natural things. choice <laughs> yeah. in many ways. You were a natural choice. Yeah. We are actually going to dive into hands-on play here in just a moment. Uh -oh. I'm delighted to inform you, but Josh, I wanted to quickly check in with you. I did promise you we were going to take a quick look at Jack and Daxter Precursor <laughs> Legacy. I gotta take a minute for this. Let's roll the footage. We've got a little bit of footage for Jack and Daxter Precursor Legacy, which if you pre-ordered Uncharted The Lost Legacy, you're getting that for free on PS4. So here we go. Hey, I animated this. You had, Okay, so tell me about that. What did, what did you do so, on this game? So Jack and Daxter was the very first game I ever worked on. I started in February 2001 uh, as a cinematics I animator. I was the one of the first cinematics animators they hired because everybody at the company used to be sort of a Pardon the expression, jack of all trades. And now, and uh, yeah, it was really when they were starting to uh, do a little bit more specializing. But at the time, I was uh, employee number 32. Wow. Uh, you know, we were all, <laughs> we were all in like two small floors, all sort of uh, bunched together. And uh, yeah, it was a really, it was really kind of an amazing time uh, working on this. And boy, it looks beautiful too. Yeah. It I actually mean, held up really well. Yeah, no, I mean, the story I like to tell is that uh, anytime you get a job at Naughty Dog, you have to take a uh, test <laughs> to make sure that, you know, you can actually do what you say you can do. So uh, they brought me into the office uh, to uh, do an animation test. And I had been working in like features and commercials. And I was feeling fairly confident walking in. Uh, and then I got in and I saw the animation that was being done on Jack and Daxter by John Kim, the main character animation. And, 
even then it was the, the best I'd ever seen in any game ever. And I was I mean it pops just, off the screen now. Yeah. I just immediately said shit. And I started started doing flop sweating like Albert Brooks and broadcast news. And, like, <laughs> and they, they kept on coming by like, hey, uh, you need anything? You have any questions? Like, no, I'm doing fine. It's, it's gonna be cool. Uh, and uh, yeah, I guess the test was good enough and they hired me and one of the very first things I did when I got hired was take that test and bury it in a directory so nobody would mm. find it. Uh, and I've kept them cool. I've been there. Yes, I've been there for like, been here for like 16 and a half That's years. That's unbelievable. Now. Wow. So, yeah. So I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of fond memories of uh, working on this. That's it great. Was, uh, now, do you think this game this this marked a bit of a turning point for Naughty Dog as a studio? Yeah. What what, what, what is the relevance you think of this title in terms of the studio culture, the style? Was this well, Naughty Dog finding its voice, finding its rhythm? Well, I think this was sort of this made for like a good bridge project because it was really you know it still has sort of like the simple charms of something like uh, Crash Bandicoot, but it was like their first dabbling, bit of dabbling in actual like narrative. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, Crash Bandicoot, great games, not really like deep, rich uh, sure. stories and characters. <laughs> um, and this was sort of like the first attempt to build a little bit more into that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as a cinema on the Cinematics team, I was sort of there trying to bring some of my sensibilities in as well, because when I first started, a lot of people for the Cinematics were just sort of pointing the character, the camera at the character, leaving it there and letting them talk for 30 seconds. Like, well, let's get some camera cuts. Let's mm -hmm. do a little bit more with this. And so it was really on Jack 2 that we decided that we wanted to like take all that storytelling aspect uh, to the next level. So this script was a lot more in depth. Uh, we tried to do a lot more elaborate stuff with the cinematics and we really tried to start blending this gameplay and cinematics together in a way that uh, the company hadn't really done before. So this really was sort of the hopping off point. And, uh, you know, I mean, it sort of came in fits and starts. There's parts of the games that were really successful, and there's parts of the games that didn't work as quite as well. Uh, Jack 2 is uh, really, really cool, but it's also really, really hard. <laughs> uh, we sort of pivoted a bit. Like, everybody said Jack 1 was too easy. And then, so we were like, oh, yeah, well, here you go. And then Jack 2 is way too hard. Deal with so, this. <laughs> and then Jack, Jack 3 sort of, like, uh, did the Goldilocks uh, just uh, yeah. right, sort of, like, nice, easy balance. Um, so we were really kind of like trying to find our voice a little bit and see what we were good at. And there's a lot of, and you know, Jack 1 was fairly simple in terms of like the uh, story and the uh, set pieces, I guess you could call them. But then by the end of Jack 3, the final boss in Jack 3 is this giant six-legged robot that walks around the entire game world as you're driving beneath it trying to blow up parts of its legs before climbing onto it. And Jeremy Yates spent I don't even know how many weeks animating that thing by hand, like 8,000 frames of animation walking wow. around the thing, wow. just, for one, just for one moment. And that was when we were really starting to see like, okay, this is, this is something we like to do. This yeah. is something that we're good at. L l like and some some shreds of DNA from yeah. Uncharted starting to emerge. It's very yeah, interesting. Little, little bits and pieces of That's it. That's interesting. Now, yeah. And the voice acting too, just, I mean, when Jack came out, I was a teenager, a young teenager. And uh, the thing I remember about Jack was Max Casella played mm -hmm. Daxter, and as a huge Doogie Hauser, MD, <laughs> and Newsies fan, I was oh, like, man, yeah. oh, wow, they have real voice actors in video games now. That was the moment of like, oh, Naughty Dog Newsies. Yeah, he was in Dude, Newsies. Newsies, man, Newsies. come on. I love we Newsies. Had, Newsies. We had, we had a pretty so good, good uh, we had a pretty good voice cast. So like, uh, Jack won the the Swarthy Fisherman, voiced by Kevin Conroy, who does ah, Batman. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I can't remember the actor's name, but it plays the sculptor and a few other characters. He played, uh, he's the guy who played Michael Bolton in Office Space. Uh, <laughs> okay. The interesting comedians here and there. Uh, the Max Casella story is funny. Uh, I don't know if they were looking at him or not for the part of Jackster in the, in, initially, but one of the projects I had worked on prior to coming to Naughty Dog was a uh, Disney movie called Dinosaur. Uh, I remember that. Uh, not very good, but <laughs> in it, uh, Max Cicella plays It's my favorite a, movie, how plays, dare you? I'm sorry, plays, he plays a lemur who is the best friend of one of the dinosaur characters and he spends quite a lot of time hanging out with the dinosaur on his shoulders. So Max had already had some prior experience playing a furry sidekick who hung around his friend all the time. And so we just sort of felt like maybe it was be a natural fit for him. But he, I mean, he is Daxter, <laughs> uh, top to bottom. I mean, he is that character, he embodied that character for years, he was a lot of fun. Fascinating bit of history there, and there's still just a few more minutes. You can actually pre-order Uncharted The Lost Legacy, and you will be given for free.
Jack and Dax the Precursor Legacy on PS4. So there you go. Uh, we are getting dangerously close, actually, folks, oh, here goodness. to the launch of uh, Uncharted The Lost Legacy on PS4. So uh, without further ado, I suggest we uh, dive in and play a little bit oh, of boy. the single player. Who, who, want, who wants to go hands off? <laughs> no, I'm so nervous. <laughs> Kurt does. <laughs> Kurt does. Kurt, you're the game director. I just want to watch Dire right direct now. Direct this game. Wanted, direct the game. I wanted them to play it. And we'll, I want to uh, play it. Right. I just don't do know if game? I want to play it with a bunch of yeah. people watching me. Yeah. Because you're going to watch me run Well, you've got a putty mouth. So it's just not no. perfect. No, I know it'll be bad. I mean, me too. Play. It's pretty funny when I'm watching football. Crushing stuff that Cru comes out of me. Can they see the screen yet? Okay. Wait, do we get to see like the opening okay. sequence and everything? Yeah. yeah so we're gonna play ah! the beginning. So I guess if if people are watching and they don't want to see any gameplay, and you're spoiler on alert, blackout, then. Then get out of always, here. We'll have this on YouTube oh later, right? Yep. So yep. People can come back yeah. and watch the reaction. That's right. Yeah, exactly. But we won't go too far, right? We're not going to get into crazy stuff. Thing. But if we're you're only watching at, what, 20, 20, 20 minutes? minutes? Yeah, there's nothing yeah. super spoilery in the oh opening parts. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Chloe is in it. Yeah. You guys haven't yeah. seen the end of the I haven't seen like, any I've of seen, the cutscenes. I've only seen the pieces that are in the trailers. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And like one cutscene that. But that ended up being a trailer anyway. Yep. It's okay. Do you want to hold my hand? No. I would love to. Not on camera. Um, so the traditionally for Uncharted, we've always had a like, spinning, no. loading icon that is one of the artifacts that you look for. In this case, it's something called the disc of, of, of uh, let me try, the disc of Ganesh. Okay, we're, we're going. Oh, so Here we go. Oh, 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 wow. This is all new content to me. Oh. I haven't seen any of this. Me neither. Me neither. Oh my God. I defeat that thing in the building. Send it back up. Send it back up now. Let's scream every time somebody's name in this room is on the screen. Okay, so I'm, I'm just... Oh, oh my ah. God, it's glowing! I don't know, how do streamers usually do this? I mean, There's like, we gotta have our hands They just sit here and watch yeah. the game, like don't say a few. They, yeah, say a picture thing. in picture sort of situation. No, I, oh, I know Robert. I know Robert very well. Woo! Woo! <laughs> okay, no, I do have a serious question for all y'all, though. That's when it's my favorite. It makes sure that. Hey, should we uh, turn on the subtitles in case we're like talking? Oh, about yeah. This? That's not a bad idea. Kurt, yeah, yeah, do you want to direct us some uh, subtitles? Uh, okay. uh, Options. Who needs to hear those voices That's anyway? That's right. I, I mean, <laughs> overrated, I say. There we go. Uh, could we get to hear as well? Yes, we've, you got, we've got all y'all right here in one room, so I want to, I'm going to get some good use out of it. This is captivating, though, isn't wow. it? <laughs> Here's what I want to ask you. Yes. In 20 minutes, this thing that you have all put so much of your life into you is about to actually is this come out. Store? What is that like for you? <laughs> Are you so nervous? Yes. And excited. It's cool. I mean, we're sort of... Okay, wow, it's just wild to have it inside of us, in our hearts and in our imaginations. We're in a very sterile volume with lots of so, cheery faces, but we're having to go on faith that everything that's being described to us will end up being animated. And it's even richer than my imagination can conjure. Yeah. So I'm just sort of taking in all these details now with everything that's been so lovingly and carefully and thoughtfully placed in these environments for the animator's own enjoyment and the designer's enjoyment. Um, wow. Well, I should point out uh, one thing, which is that uh, Starting with Uncharted 4, we started using uh, face capture to uh, do the uh, face animations. So it's a couple step process. You know, they have to put all these green dots over their space. It's very laborious. Uh, and once we get the face data back, the animators go in and massage it. But what's really interesting about it is on Uncharted 2 and 3 and Last of Us, all the uh, face animation was uh, hand animated. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting here, I and mean, we did a really, the animators did a phenomenal job here. What's interesting here is that Anytime I'm watching Chloe here, woo! or woo, or <laughs> hey, there's my name, Yay! or uh, watching uh, Nadine and Laura, is you're seeing their face in the game. Like these ex expressions that they're making are faces that Laura mm. and Claudia make, okay, wow. and it's really interesting. Just kind of like seeing them. Uh, their ex expressions transposed Coming onto through. a different face. Yeah, and I noticed yeah. that uh, it was, uh, Naughty Dog's always had incredible performance capture, but clearly the technology has grown by leaps and bounds, mm -hmm. and 4 is where I really noticed it, like in a way I had never noticed it before. Yeah. Wow. yeah. I mean, there's still, uh, 
to give the animators a lot of quick credit, there's still a lot of work that has to be done after you get the oh, face sure. capture. God. But it provides, just like the body capture, it provides a good base to start with. The little glances, the little mm -hmm. extra eye movements, things that aren't scripted out, it's just these little touches that a uh, performer can bring. Right, and Sean directed us in a very cinematic way, especially yeah. when we started with the trailers, so he would say, we're going to be on a close-up of you and you don't have to convey this any other way. And I'd say, really? I mean, can you, are you really going to be able to see the nuances <laughs> to enough of a degree that we're going to be able to indicate to the audience what's going on? And he said, just you wait. And I was wow. stunned to see the detail in our faces. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, really just some of the best, if not the best out there. Yeah. <laughs> So yes, this is photo of, mode. Yeah, this is one of the uh, this is one of the new things in the game. Uh, you know, uh, we were always talking about. Uh, well, Nathan Drake had his journal, so uh, Chloe is going to be somebody. Uh, you know, she's not the journal type, but uh, we figured uh, maybe more of a scrapbooky type. I don't know. You tell me. But, uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's something that allows uh, Chloe just to record things as she's uh, going through the game, and there's a lot of places that you can uh, take photos that you can then look back later. I like to imagine Chloe with a scrapbook like and stickers yeah. and cutting out little no one knows about it yeah. but she just keeps all these yeah. mementos things that she's stolen mostly yeah she doesn't show many people she's making a little uh bff uh, collage for the two of you for, uh... <laughs> you can't go inside without removing your shoes i know i just wanted to look at the mandapam <laughs> can we talk about how the little girl who played minu ate us out of craft service Everything. <laughs> <laughs> she had a little plate of beef jerky that she would eat in between every take. Yep. And then when we ran out of beef jerky, we were all really nervous. Yeah, like, is no. she going to keep working? <laughs> Will she keep doing <laughs> takes? You're not a tourist, are you? Hello, lady. Great prices. Thank you. We're busy here. <laughs> oh, I've already got what I need. Thanks. Wow. Do you work for CIA? Because that would be very cool. <laughs> These crowd scenes look so good. I need shut up. People aren't allowed across the bridge. It's too dangerous. Crowd scenes are a this lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. To but you know, they, they make, they make a, a big impact though. Store. So if you just have one of them in a game, you can do so much with that one scene, you know? Uh, yeah. I was I was relieved to see that Chloe was actually rather pleasant to this young girl because she could have been really mean and mm -hmm. I thought, oh, there's some humanity there. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. I need yeah. to help my friend, okay? Tell you what, when I get back, pizza's on me. Oh, boy. Deal. Look at that look. <laughs> Uh, I was one of those soldiers. Were you really? I was the body for one of those soldiers. Awesome. We had to do about four extra takes for Nora. <laughs> That's me. I was that soldier really? guy. Really? Yeah. yeah. How about that? So I did my stunt. This is me yeah. doing my stunt. <laughs> woo! You're welcome. It looked. Woo! It's I'm Black Nora. Woo! That's exciting. That looks real good. Oh my goodness gracious. I mean, it's just, it's just a and facial right up, the animation is right up, oh! Marganow. <laughs> Kurt Marganow. Uncharted. That's how you say it. Hey, you guys. That's how you say it. I almost blanked when I was doing the intro to this, but I didn't. Oh, wow. <gasps> this I know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So... Funny story about this. Uh, everybody who's did you do that jump too? Familiar? Sure. <laughs> sure. Oh, totally. She did all of her. Stunts. Continue, Josh. Please. Uh, yeah, did all of her stunts. Uh, for the people who are familiar with the uh, PSX demo that uh, we showed, uh, you might recall that uh, Chloe's face was uh, covered through this entire sequence. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was, that, now, was that smoke and mirrors? Was that just a... Uh... Oh, it was total smoke and mirrors. Yeah. Yeah. No, the whole idea was like yeah, we, we did not want to reveal who this person was. Uh, but that's actually, uh, the face covering is actually not something that's, you know, traditionally done in India so much here. But uh, it was so dramatic in that trailer. But, yeah, no, that, but that was, the, uh, that was the whole point behind it. Wow. I know. <laughs> this is a great sequence. Yeah. I like how we're not talking at all, we just want to watch I, it. We need to talk, but <laughs> somehow I can't. No, I know. I do have some more questions. That'll keep okay, us, uh, yeah, that'll yeah, keep yeah, us yeah. going ask, here. Ask us questions. Hey, so we're, um, uh, I got a question from Mill on Twitter. Uh, what do you think makes Asav, now this is, that's the big villain Asav. here. Asav. Asav. Sorry, Asav. What do you think makes Asav different from the rest of Uncharted's villains? Uh, he's a little bit of a diff uh, different character. His motivations are a little bit different. Yeah. 
Is that fair to say? He's such a, yeah. he's like a really yeah. dangerous academic, you know, when you see his <laughs> appearance. I mean, Chloe underestimates him. She really mis underestimates him. Um, and he's more, he turns out, I think, to be more brutal than any other villain you've had in, this, in this world. Yeah. He's so soft-spoken. Oh, and that's, that's what makes him so scary, yeah. is that he's able to control um, <sighs> right. that Yes, so the sub was played by uh, Usman yeah. Ali, who uh, you may have seen in uh, Veep. what is it? Unfortunate Veep, yeah. Events, yeah. Veep, a bunch of other stuff. He's Very just fantastic. Nerdy. He's we hilarious. Learned. He is yeah. so He's funny. Yeah. yeah, that's the yeah that's the funny thing. He is absolutely hilarious and the nicest the guy you could possibly meet, and yet in this he's just uh, yes, super cold and scary and. Uh, it was one of those things where, uh, you know, we auditioned a bunch of people and uh, as soon as he had done his first audition, we just knew, like, yep, that's him. That's a sub. Okay, cool. We're done. We still have to see everybody else today out of courtesy, but uh, chances are this is going to be the guy. I have a question um, for you about body signature. Mm -hmm. Do, when you look at people, is it like reading mm. The Matrix? Are you looking at their <laughs> internal kind of structure to understand what, how that will be, how that would then convert to the game? Maybe from, maybe from my days as the uh, animation lead, but a, little, but, a, but a little bit. I mean... But that's not really a super important consideration uh, because we know like if, say, that's somebody who has to be like super physical but they themselves <laughs> right. are not super right. physical, we'll just get a stunt person to uh, help out. Uh, what do you see when you look at me, Josh? <laughs> when you when you deconstruct me, am I what kind of character would a I play? Very <laughs> villain, agile. I'm just, I'm just saying ones and zeros scrolling down the face. <laughs> it's like, uh, we you, did put you in a red dress, just like go. in the Matrix. You All see right. a glitch exactly. in the program <laughs> to see if we've got your attention. Exactly. Oh, that was a massive road. Yeah, yes. I mean, obviously, you know, it's kind of interesting. It does it does play a small consideration, and you know, particularly like when we're auditioning for various characters. Uh, like way back when we were auditioning for uh, Lazarevich uh, before right. we had uh, settled on uh, Grant McTavish, right. who of course you know killed it. Uh, a lot of the people that we were uh, talking about, uh, there's one guy that we kind of liked who was uh, considerably smaller, and we were thinking, okay, how's this going to, uh, how's this going to change the uh, signature mm. of the character? Mm. But that really ultimately isn't the biggest consideration. Um, <gasps> oh. What like body type isn't the biggest consideration? Is not. Oh. Yeah. That's no. good. I mean, because good to know. because you've got sliders and things, you can yeah. stretch and expand. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I mean, you know, like six four. Yeah. And like, Joel isn't as tall. Like, all the yeah. characters can be yeah. scaled. Everything can be everything can be adjusted. Uh, you know, as long as you're not like casting somebody who's like three foot two and then having them play somebody six foot four. Yeah. You know, that never. Right. It's more about your proportion with the other actors, right? Yeah. Even that's even that's uh, adjustable. Like really? if uh, if somebody's taller in real life, then all we have to do is just change the angle of the head after the fact to uh, meet the gaze. Oh wow! Like yeah, I had so. in my contract that your boobs yeah. weren't allowed to be as big as mine. Oh, so well, we adjusted. Getting it convenient because uh, they're not. A lot of yeah. <laughs> Get, getting some real inside. Uh, we spent we, mm -hmm. weeks. Insight into how this all works. Always into the craft. in my contract. That's right. Always. <laughs> that's important. That's you a know? new uh, lockpick yeah. there uh, so, mechanic, yes. by the this, way. Yes, yes, this yes. moment right here in the PSX demo, when she still had the veil on, that was the time I thought everybody was, was going to be like, oh my God, it's Chloe. Yeah. But no. I heard <laughs> a few. Woo! Yeah, I heard, I heard, heard some woo! people early on in the, the back of the room. There definitely oh. were a few woos, but somehow yeah. we managed to but keep it going messages? until the very end. And then they really went berserk. Like Is yeah. it, was the trailer different to the ones yeah. you've done before? So was it more, to me, it felt very atmospheric and very, I mean that, it required a lot of patience. I just can't remember what you was, did in previous years. We just very deliberately were trying to keep uh, Chloe's identity hidden. Right. So everything was sort of like pieced around that. Right. And so... Um, so there was more room for people to sort of not necessarily know who it was. Exactly. And I mean, even uh, what Kurt's uh, doing right now is uh, he's going a different route than we did in the uh, PSX demo. Right. Uh, but of course, oh, when yeah. we, of course, when we do the demo, we have to go right. one particular way. But since um, it's Uncharted, you can climb everything, basically. Anyone got the time? I mean, I think this game's out like any minute now. Oh my gosh. Like oh, seven, it comes out in seven oh, minutes. Seven, yeah. minutes. seven I thought it was seven minutes. minutes. Okay, seven. Sparklers and That's like right. poppers. We'll, and get, we'll get Nadine in there in seven minutes. There and you well, go. do you have visual clues anymore? I remember with Uncharted um, 2, when we were sort of walking through Nepal, you would have these little blue bricks on the side of buildings as a little clue for when we, to climb. We try to keep it as subtle as possible, uh, but right. there we do have. Uh, there are ways that we try to key in to say, like you know, this is something that's climbable. Right. This is number, okay. and it's, and it's okay. exactly, and it's not just. Uh, it's not just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oi, climb over here! <laughs> 
What are you no, blind? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's not just the color, it's also like shape, like you know, something's jaggedy, you know, not to climb it versus something that's smooth might be more likely. So with, so with this sequence at PSX, I still didn't know it was uncharted. I thought I was like, is this The Last of Us Part Two? Mm -hmm. I mean that actually ran through my head because wow. it had this apocalyptic yep. nice. I didn't know. Yeah, a lot of people thought that. And, and it turned out it wasn't oh, until it later out. in the show. And then it's they did. Yeah. You know now? It's it, it, I do yeah. know. I did Lost finally Legacy. learn. That's yeah. right. It's Uncharted The Lost Legacy, which is out in five minutes or so oh, at hey. PlayStation Store. I mean, seriously, it's got to be nuts here's, for you guys. Here's, here's one of your moments. I like this. Ooh. Oh, my God. Oh, that was yeah. <laughs> it's so funny because, you know, like filming this scene, P.S., you're about to see me, D. Um, filming this scene, you know, we knew it was a marquee, right. but all we had were like loose bars and everything. Right. Just yeah. try to figure out what our view was. It's crazy. You're in the wrong place, girl. And gameplay. Uh, give it to him. Yeah. I love Careful, that Chloe's Kurt. style of fighting is like bar brawl, yeah. <laughs> which is personally yeah. sort of my favorite. Yeah, Kurt can speak to this, but one of the challenges in this sequence here was trying to find an organic way to uh, introduce uh, Nadine into it without turning it into ah. a cutscene. Hey. 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 Yeah. Organic. <laughs> There's your organic. There you cool. You are green. I wear pink. And it is interesting to see uh, <laughs> the physicality of the characters different than Drake. It's uh, yeah. kind of more there's barroom brawl, but kind of ninja yeah. barroom yeah, exactly. brawl. Yeah, having to get down lower. Yeah, and, using yeah. the body weight yep. and everything. Oh, you should relax. You'll live longer. <laughs> <laughs> relax. It took me weeks to track down a solve. The man's as unpredictable as they come. He's just another warmonger with no water fight. No, you don't know him like I do. He changes location and routines by the hour. We'd be foolish to take unnecessary risks. We. Let's get one thing straight. I say this one of my favorite my little gig. details is when we Chloe gets uh, sweaty and a lot of exertion. Mm -hmm. We do the thing with the hair yeah. getting yeah. stuck to the side of her face, so good. dangling down. A whole system for her hair. That the I'm hair in this, <laughs> across the board. I've had meetings with your hair teams, <laughs> and I mean it goes on for hours. They they have so much love for hair and try to do it just so. Well, it's so important. It is. If the hair moves weird. We're wrong, it takes you out of the moment. It's true. I like this, I like this dialogue. If you're into psychopaths, nobody's perfect. <laughs> can. Top floor balcony. Uh, that if you're right. psychopath. Yeah. Slight reference to maybe one of her prior relationships. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not saying any names. No spoilers. And me saying nobody's perfect is <laughs> slighted we yeah. know into my previous relationships. <laughs> <laughs> true story. Already on chapter two. I got another question here, real oh my quick. Gosh. Uh, <laughs> Steven from Facebook asked, "What is the theme of the story this time around? Uncharted Four focused on greed. Will the Lost Legacy focus on family legacy?" Hmm. Oh, I think that's a fair uh, assumption. What say you, Josh and Kurt, and everyone yeah. else? I don't know how much you want to say yeah. about no, it. No, right? Really? Yeah. Uh, okay. You know, I think uh, the theme there is a theme. <laughs> There is a theme. By it's now, like and find out. Girl power. <laughs> yeah. In yeah, one exactly. minute, you're going to find out. Yeah. It's I girl think, power. Um, Follow me. Yeah. Wee! <laughs> there we go. It's hard to like watch it and not do the reaction. Right. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> we spend hours yeah. in the studio afterwards adding yeah. in noises to sort of, you know. Sounds no. very authentic when you do it. <laughs> And then they get to script, it's like you're going on one rung, and then you slip slightly, and then you yeah. almost fall, but then you don't, but then you do fall, so really? it's like a, oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite reads of Claudia's That's right what here. it is. Yeah. It's one of my favorite reads here. Oh. I don't want to alarm everybody. No. Are you sure this is safe? No. <laughs> yeah. These signs are way cooler than I thought they'd be. Yeah, oh my gosh, this is so this cool. beautiful. Yeah, really beautiful. Guys, we have just over three minutes until this <laughs> three game is minutes. available. <laughs> you see that countdown Eight. clock? It's very Seven. dramatic. No, oh, six, five. But that's down to like the three minutes. You yeah. can do that for every second. <laughs> <laughs> I was just giving 59. a little taste. <laughs> Come on, yeah. this way. I mean, I guess, I guess if you want to talk about the theme, uh, I mean, like we're, with like, like, well, you know? I mean, what we were talking about earlier uh, in this uh, stream and the idea of like, you know, Chloe always being the one uh, that uh, you know walks away from a bad situation. She's never been the one to sort of like stick her neck out for anybody else. So the question is like, you know, what is it that makes her or really anyone do that, and what's and what's the situation there? 
and uh, how have other people done it for her in her life, mm -hmm. and how does this all tie into the other characters? Kurt. What's that spiritual um, saying? You're, you're never really lost, you're just... You never really... When God shuts a door, he opens a window? Just yeah. <laughs> so, so just to... Just Bad to find something directions, <laughs> you're just... Yeah. Josh is talking. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'll stop. I'll no, stop but there is, there is a saying, and of course I'll remember it afterward when no one cares, but um, <laughs> I think it's interesting. I think it's just lost itself is an interesting theme, mm -hmm. and the ways that we think we're lost or the ways we get lost and what happens when we surrender. You know, it's like really deep. You're really, really deep. lost. You're just finding That's a new really route. Deep. You're just, oh, wow. you're just a blow taking the, the long scenic way. tour or something. Same it's way. one of those. You're just rerouting that ways. That sounds This better. is why I'm a writer. <laughs> 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 yeah, ways just took you through all the suburbs. <laughs> ways just made you make a really, really hard left turn into oncoming traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Although I do it. rely on them. Just exploring our options. Wow, these signs are amazing. Yeah, they, this is super cool. I always love it when Uncharted kind of gets out of the jungle or out of the desert for oh a minute God. or two. Just give yeah. me a city for a that second. Was, that was also one of the goals too. We wanted to make sure that we had like a good mix because yeah. we knew the majority of the game was going to be taking place in like sort of a more jungly environment. So I have a, I have a question for you from uh, No Name from Twitter asked. <laughs> I love the brutal simplicity of this question. Uh -oh. Will there be Easter eggs? Uh, <laughs> if you mean like oh, the bonus yeah. unlockables, like the kind that we have in every game, mm -hmm. yes. If you're talking about little hidden things oh. in there. Oh. 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 Yeah, I'd say, you know, a lot of the uh, hidden trophies that are in the game are sort of Easter eggy. Okay. Uh, there's definitely, there's definitely one Easter egg. Sorry of sorts that. in the, uh, in the Western Goth sequence, the, uh, the open-ended world the that you can find. Okay. I would assume I was being a little facetious to include this, but I was assuming that there would be indeed be some uh, yeah. some Easter eggs oh, and, and various seconds. secrets. Yeah, yeah. folks, oh folks, oh. Eleven. should we count down? Ten, Ten nine, nine, eight, eight seven, seven, six, five, five four, 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 four three, 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 two, one. two one. one. Lost Legacy. <laughs> Uncharted: The Lost Legacy. Download. Download. I did. I just got very excited. Right. I was like, the there we go. The band that was just a there we go. Let's uh, round of applause for Uncharted: The Lost Launched. Legacy. It's out now, PlayStation Store. How exciting! How exciting! Oh, so poor Chloe's stuck on the side of a building. Yeah. yeah. She, well, how's she gonna play? Yeah. Well, can I just <laughs> to knock be her continued? Off of it? Okay. No. I don't know. Are we continuing? Oh, are we <laughs> gonna keep going? Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Okay, I want to see what's next. Here. All right. Here. We can play. Uh, Here we go. Let's play climb the up. Sob scene. Polishing the walls. Yeah. Dancing, yeah. So. No, you just cleaned up a little. It's nice. Here we go. I like how if you just take a scenic route. Oh, oh there I am. Well hit. <laughs> just lurking sound. in the darkness. Kind of creepy. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's, that's a really <laughs> ominous sound. Yeah. That's a very old computer. <laughs> doesn't even bother to check that out. It's like no clues there, no nothing. There is a bit of a, uh, on that Easter egg note though, on the collectibles note, there is a red door. When we get to Western Got, there Gots, Gots, Gats, Gats. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not, cats, I'm not, Broadway I'm, musical. I'm not much for pronunciation. I gotta say, this is why I struggle with Kurt's name so much. But um, <laughs> eat it. <laughs> just Could you come to my occupation. apartment and you'll just sit there and you'll do that as I play? Quite possibly. I love That's it. That's where we just were. <laughs> oh my. But yeah, they're. Uh, Love how Nadine just watches her. Yeah, she's, she's like, like, oh, she's she's like, like have fun with that. Go, uh, <laughs> there is a you bit tell of. Tell me when you find the route. I'll, I'll yeah. follow you along. There's a bit of a meta game though with the treasures and whatnot in this, right? They're a little bit more narratively tied in, as I, I've heard. There is some very specific group of treasures that you can find in the Western Gas sequence okay. uh, that uh, it'll look quite a lot of fun to, okay. uh, to uh, seek out. Well, I can't wait to uh, to try that. Yeah. Okay, lock pick. Here we go. Yeah. yeah, I like this very much. This sort of. Nice little compare contrast between uh, Chloe and Nadine here. Yeah, and Kurt, I had heard oh, that yeah. <laughs> I'd heard that Naughty Dog employees had like bought lock picking kits to fool around with so, this to get the feel of this. Yeah, Is that true? Uh, Can you confirm? The designer on the lock picking, Daniel uh, Harrison, he <laughs> dove right in when we talked about doing lock picks and he bought a lock pick set Watch and would backs, yeah? kinda everyone <laughs> kinda learned how to pick a real lock with Oh wow. A lot of fun. And yeah, he can pick like a 
five pin lock in like three seconds. What? With wow. one hand to tie back. That's insane. But isn't there like a whole accrediting system or something? Isn't there some guild you have to join? That's what uh, Wikipedia said. Just so they can keep Look tabs at Wikipedia. on you because you're basically you criminal Amazon. unless you're All right. I they feel give like, you like a little test lock. It's like transparent. You can see what? the pins inside. Which oh is wow! That's a complete change of subject. Yeah. I feel like I have to say, like when we were doing Uncharted Four, anytime I had a scene with Rafe, I would try to do this like power struggle with him, <laughs> and I never told him I was doing it. I would just see if I could win, huh. and then I tried to do it with you. <laughs> did you? Really? I really did, and it just like it just kept going back and forth. I was like, oh man, she's really strong. <laughs> That's funny. It was just, I mean, it was just impressive, like. Just with like mental back and forth, like mind just games. Like, yeah, oh. just as, for an actor, it. right? Like just yeah. as an actor, is an actor well, thing. I, depends I mean, on your the, process, it, and it yeah. depends on the character. Right. You know, like maybe he's close she's to both of these women have very dominating presence. Right. Is, right. And I think it's it's really cool the back and forth that they have. How funny! Yeah, I, I know. He's telling me that I didn't know. <laughs> Well, so it's like in an acting class where they take one actor out of the room and whisper something to them, and then they say, "Okay, now go and do the scene," and then you're like, "I'm terrified. I, I don't know." Who yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's the what's? The... It sounds like fun. That is the tusk of Ganesh. It right looks there. sort of underwhelming. I can't believe we built a whole <laughs> game around finding that <laughs> weird <laughs> atrophy <laughs> man part. That's promising. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. I said it. Why didn't Cut Chloe? The I can't believe Chloe <laughs> didn't say that. Because <laughs> there's something you know. You're watching the thing. They say. Wow, it's, it's beautiful, it's isn't it? And then they, you know, cut to the shot of what it is. Oh, totally. To me, it's like <laughs> an atrophied <laughs> man part. I mean, nothing wrong with that. Call him as I see him. Yeah, you have to. No similarities between me and Chloe. <laughs> no ad libs. No, no ad libs ever happen. No. Nope. Ever. You got this. Bam. Sure do. Bang. Got a bad feeling about this thing. <sighs> Dude. Fire hazard, kerosene. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh, it's time to go. Uh-oh. Like <gasps> Here we go. Oh, I like there's Asaf. Asaf. Asaf, I can't. Nadine. I can't. Oh. Ross. He's like what a pleasant surprise. <laughs> ah, ah, careful, brothers. This tiger's got claws. <laughs> Asof. Oh, all these years. And you haven't aged a day. You two can't. <laughs> Are you looking for work? I hear that shoreline's under new management. Burn. I said bank cost. I know, right? <laughs> Nothing you can't handle. Of course, of course. Say. Pity though. Looking for work because I've got something. My man and I could do some of it. Sean and I probably. <laughs> Sean and I probably wrote like 30 versions of this scene because it was. I mean, it was super crucial because oh, not man. only are you seeing the interplay between uh, Chloe and Nadine and how they both approach the situation differently, but also developing, this, establishing nice the uh, villain in the game. So Chloe the earlier it. versions of the scene were a lot different. Uh, but the, uh, that's kind of what it takes to. Uh, Get there. This is the audition okay. scene for a song. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Josh, what do you think is critical to nail in a good villain? Yeah, situation. Tell us all the secrets about <laughs> that. <laughs> well, the thing with villains. Write 30 versions of every scene. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You'll find it. I mean, this is this is sort of the this is sort of the old canard, but uh, the idea is that you know, to the villain, the villain is never the villain. He is oh, the hero of his right. own story. About that. Right. And so At they think they're doing the right thing, I you know, you unless you have an actual honest to God sociopath. Uh, you know, rebel. they believe they're doing the right thing and they just see the uh, main characters, the protagonist, as like, you know, obstacles in their way towards uh, whatever their goal happens the to be. Treasure. So you have to try to make them an the actual person first, ideally. That's so in the case of Asav, um, I think I said it right that time, mm -hmm. what, what, are, what, are, what is his sort of motivation in all of this? Well, you'll see a little bit as the game no develops, but the uh, idea is that uh, he You're lost. is not particularly happy with the uh, Indian government. Uh, he feels like uh, he wants to go back towards uh, the way that the uh, land used to be ruled by the uh, Hoysala Empire, a lot more sort of tough and uh, ruled with an iron fist. Uh, and so he is looking for the tusk of Ganesh because it's the symbol of the empire was sort of, he believes the symbol of their might and their strength. I see. And by using this as like a rallying point, he can get more people behind his cause. So he's an idealist, I mean. In a way, yeah, yeah in okay. a way. You know, the unideal idealist. Yeah. Right. 
but uh, but ultimately, I mean, right here he's uh, being uh, fairly uh, exactly. Right here he's being uh, fairly uh, self-righteous. Uh, but yeah, when you do sort of like the when you do sort of the mustache twirly or uh, yeah. beard twirly or you know like dreadlock twirly, whatever they twirl, you know, some you sort of twirling. Wanna, yeah, some kind of twirling going on. Uh, his face is just out of this wide world. Let's do it. Oh. Go power. Eat it. A daring escape. And this is the beginning of them having to figure out, like any good duo, how they're going to get themselves out of all of these situations. I just want to say I love the bursting light bulbs. Yep. Yes. So yes. Good. Who doesn't? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, and the thunderstorm. Yeah. Maybe Nadine yeah. must follow after yeah. her. Our artists and I mean sound designers and programmers and I mean everybody like. Every now and then I'll be like playing one of our games and I'll sort of think back to when I was a kid playing, you know, Space Invaders <laughs> or, you know, Atari Adventure mm. with like the dragons that looked like ducks. Galactica. And I sort of, I sort of, uh, I sort of imagine going back in time and like showing them footage of like one of our amazing uh, games. Like, can you imagine? It's like, hey dude, this is what games are going to look like in 35 years. Yeah. And, then, you know, like, and then, you know, like dying on the spot and then I don't actually get to make <laughs> yeah. the games because of the time paradox, but still. You could never have imagined anything like this. No, I don't think anybody could have. No. Is, it, is it Galactica? Is that the one where you have the, the spaceship shooting? Oh, Galaga. Ga Galaga. Galaga. Yeah. Yeah. Galaga. That's a great game. I just would get bruises on that one spot. Oh, oh yeah. I get blisters yeah. on my yeah. thumbs. And your guy better be. I think I push the controls too hard. I find that a lot with folks wrap their fingers yeah, like they're trying to throttle like the knuckles. controller, you know? I'm just watching it like a movie and I forget I you're actually playing it, Kurt. No, that's wild. Woof! Oh, woo! That's a hut! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best thing ever. <laughs> can we come up with like a soundboard where you do those <laughs> yeah. and we can play them on the phone exactly. or something? Like on a Cassia tone. Yeah, exactly. That's I mean, not a bad idea. Like you could add a you could charge keyboard for it. to your phone. Yeah. And then just have all these you sounds. You could charge. That could be well in-app in purchase money. When you're sort of having something. difficulty texting messages, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, if I could make don't noises don't like don't that, I would do it all day long. <laughs> well, you can. It's yeah. amazing what comes out of you when you're finding sort of yeah. asked to do it. Oh, God! It's so intense right now. <sighs> Holy moly. Yeah, Sid's talking about what you were talking about earlier in terms of like colors and things like that. In a sequence like this, especially where the player has to like move their ass and get right. out of yeah. the line of fire, little... there's going to be little things like, right. you know, lights right. or things that like everything's kind of gray or blue colored and then you have these bright lights that draw right. your that draw your eye towards like yeah. towards say, this is the way you're supposed to go. And that little, and, was that moon path? Was mm -hmm. that really? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, wow. so, so all these little things that... Uh, Try to make it as subtle as humanly possible. And there, you know, it's that, I think that's a classic kind yeah. of Uncharted thing where there's little sections on the building that you, one could possibly find oneself on if one. Pop, pop, pop. One of the things I love about what you guys do so well is. Oh, damn. Is really making it feel like the conversations and the, and the action happening between the companion and the player are so real There's a that when I'm playing, I always want to turn around and like make sure that like Nadine's <laughs> following behind me and like I want to look at you while the conversation's happening. Right. It's totally crazy. That's awesome. So final thoughts here. I mean, the game has just launched. It's out now on PlayStation Store. Oh. Uh, Uncharted The Lost Legacy, it's here. You guys have put a lot of work into this thing over the last year plus. This is the culmination of a lot of big ideas and a lot of late nights. What, what's it like? It's out. You can go get it now. How are we going out there? It's great. It's well, we've had it for a while. Yeah. We've been playing I mean, it. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if you know this. I, I understand. <laughs> I understand that. But I mean, it's your baby. It's out in the world. All the gamers can I'm play it now. I'm excited to see yeah. the photo mode tweets and yeah. all the fun just... Yeah. yeah, people yeah. impressions like just seeing what people think of it. I mean, yeah. you know, the reviews are out, and uh, they're we, quite good. And now, uh, now we get to see uh, quite good. Now, and, yeah, I was up at midnight with the F5 key, like okay, okay, okay. But uh, you know, now it's out in the hands of the fans, and you know, we'll get to see their reactions. Yeah. And, uh, you know, watch I, all the live streams. Yeah, we yeah, have one I, here. We've got one right here. That's right. I don't think a lot of I people love... knew. I saw it on my Twitter feed. You know, do I have to have played the other games prior? You know, previous to this? No. I mean, you'll miss some juicy pieces about Nadine and Chloe, but I think you can have a really great experience. Yeah, if you're we, coming in. Yeah. Yeah, we tried really hard to make this a standalone. Game. Yeah. And of course, if you play the other games, you're gonna have uh, 
some prior knowledge that will play into some of the little things that we layer in, like maybe a few little inside jokes or whatever. But it's not going to detract from your enjoyment of the game. It's still a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully it will encourage you to go back and play the other games. Right. Yeah. Of which there are four others. And they are fine, fine games, I will yes, add. Yes, they yeah, It's are. kind of crazy to think that first Uncharted uh, that came out in uh, 2007. Oh, Almost so, 10 years ago. So, We're yeah, coming it's up. been about 10 years. I mean, it's wow. impressive, though, cranking out five games in 10 years and having them be at that level of quality. It's no, no small feat. Uh, throwing, throwing in uh, The Last of Us and uh, Left oh. Behind in there, too. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we, I still kind of can't believe we turned this around in a year. That was kind of a yeah. Herculean effort on everybody's part. Well, and, great job. Uh, turned out really, really well. You guys, it's time to get lost in this legacy. <laughs> oh, no. no, you didn't. I no. did. Oh, my God. Oh, my. She's been saving that. Oh She's God. been thinking of it since the very beginning of this stream. I stole oh it God. from someone on set. That was awesome, <laughs> just before we did a take. Guys, let's get lost in this legacy. I was like, mm. oh, no. Damn, that's really good. Has anybody seen my legacy? <laughs> I seem to have misplaced my legacy. Where is Chloe's legacy? I left it on the table, and now it's gone. Yeah, she left it in the bathroom oh. when she went to that 7-Eleven, yeah. and no. now... You shouldn't have said it on the back of the toilet. <laughs> Ever. Enter the uh, Western Gats. This is, uh, this is sort of the prelude. To okay, okay. A little, little bit of a run-up. We are physically in the Western Gats. Okay. Yes. It as much as we can be. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, I'm going to propose that this is a good moment to. Uh, yeah, what is everyone watching? I need watching to go home and download Yeah, go yeah. play everyone this should, game. Yeah. It's, out it's out now. It's out now on PlayStation Store. Everybody left every, anyway. anyway. Is right. anybody still watching? We can say anything we want. No, let's not. Okay. Let's not. Let's not. <laughs> go buy don't Uncharted the Lost license. Legacy. Yeah, don't encourage Claudia. <laughs> hey. Oh. <laughs> Thank you to everyone in Europe who got up early, very, yeah. very early, or didn't go to bed to join us. Thank you, Claudia and Laura, for doing such an amazing job with the characters. Yes, it's a joy. Guys, and for joining us here tonight. Thank you for allowing yeah. us to be part of this. Yes. yes. Oh, cool. and, and Kurt and Josh, thank you so much for coming with us as well. And thank you, Sid. I need to thank everyone. I didn't thank anyone yet. Okay, yes. Good, yeah. For hosting. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely welcome anytime. So that's uh, that was our countdown to launch for Uncharted, The Lost Legacy. It's out now at PlayStation Store. Woo. Uh, the, it has launched. We have counted down to launch, Assume. and it has launched. So oh. that's the end. <laughs> she just Thanks got, for watching. Dude, <laughs> talk about leaving me hanging. Hanging. <laughs> Here we go. We playing easy mode? Is that why I'm back again so quickly? <laughs> <laughs>